the bells on Christmas Day, their old familiar carols play. There now, nothing like adding a little decoration to help with the Christmas spirit. What's this, visitors? Come in, come in, the door's unlocked. Hello, Squire Badger. I see you've got your Christmas decorations up already. Yes, yes. How about you, youngins? Are you ready for Christmas? Uh-huh. We sure are. Boy, we can hardly wait. Yes, well, it won't be long now. Here, why don't you kids sit down and keep me company for a while? Would you tell us a story, Squire? Oh, yes. Please tell us a Christmas story. A Christmas story? Hmm. Well, suppose I tell you a Christmas story that is sort of different. One without toys and, if you don't mind, without Santa Claus. A story without Santa Claus? That's right. It's a story about love and sharing. Not just at Christmas time, but all the year round. Oh, we'd like that. Well, our story begins quite some time ago. Right out there in the middle of the meadow where a tiny tree was growing. It wasn't as tall as the other trees that lived in the forest, but it was a very special tree, a whispering pine. Well now, on that particular day, over by the vacant farm, an important event for the little animals was about to take place. It was Groundhog Day. The one day Mr. Groundhog came out of his house to look for his shadow. Why does the Groundhog look for a shadow, Mr. Mole? What? what? Why does he look for his shadow? Well, if he doesn't have a shadow, there will be six weeks of good weather and an early spring. <laughs> is opening. Well, sir, the groundhog came out and stood in front of the group. He lifted a finger, tested the weather, then looked up at the flat gray sky, then looked down for his shadow and all around. There's no shadow. Oh, there's no shadow. There's no shadow? Oh, spring is coming early this year. Oh, spring is coming. I must tell Tiny Tree. Uh-huh, and I'll go tell Mr. Frog the good news. If you have a little secret And you don't think that it can last Simply tell it to a turtle and it won't get around very fast. Tell it to a turtle, tell it to a turtle, and it won't get around very fast. Spring is here, spring is here. Oh, Mr. Frog, uh, Mr. Frog, spring is here. Oh, well, maybe I can spread the news next spring. The word of spring coming even reached Horace Hawk. Now, Horace wasn't exactly like other hawks. Horace was a vegetarian. That's right. I'm called Horace, the vegetarian hawk. Hmm, and I'm always hungry. Hey, what have we here? Oh, my goodness! Goodness me! Oh, my! There's nothing more potent than old onions. Hey, it's just what I've been looking for. An onion? Sure, sure, have one, Mr. Hawk. Be my guest. Whew, 
there for a second. I thought you'd given up being a vegetarian. <laughs> <laughs> Not on your life, Mr. Mole. Not on your life. <laughs> Not on my life. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> Yes, Mr. Groundhog was right again. It wasn't long before the west wind brought the first signs of spring to the meadow. Woo-wee! Well, hello there, tiny tree. I say hello to you. <laughs> Boy, do we have a good time down there. I'm telling you, it was beautiful. But I am glad to be back here in the meadow. Guess what I learned in South America. Oh, I can cha-cha-cha. Uh, by the way, did anyone move into that farmhouse while we were away? As far as I know, it's still empty. Uh, Yoo-hoo, everyone! Uh, attention, please! Uh, listen, I have got news. Uh, they're moving in. Someone's moving into the farmhouse. Into the farmhouse? Someone's moved in? Are there any children? And there's a little girl, but she's... Uh, maybe she'll come out and play with us. Hey! Hey, wait, I, I haven't finished! Oh, I'll be doggone. I wanted to tell them that the little girl is in a chair with wheels, and I overheard her parents say she's been in an accident, and it'll be quite some time before she can run and play. Look, there she is. Why, she's in a chair with wheels. Look, she's not smiling. Oh, and she can't run and play. Isn't that sad? Oh, well, that's what I tried to tell you. Dear, dear, do you think we could cheer her up? Why not? Uh, we can try. Let's welcome her to the meadow. <laughs> Ooh Gee, I, I just wonder if she's going to like us. Well, why don't we find out? <clears throat> uh, uh, on behalf of the members of the meadow, uh, 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 that is... We'd like to welcome you to the meadow. Well, um, y yeah, that's right. Uh, welcome to the meadow. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. She likes us. Hey, let's show her the tiny tree. <laughs> Yes, the meeting of the tiny tree and the little girl was a magical moment. Oh, he's nice. Oh, look, I knew it, I knew it. What a wonderful idea. <laughs> What's that, tiny tree? <laughs> Uh-huh. Uh, the tiny tree likes you, too. Yes, indeed. It was love at first sight for that little girl in the tiny tree. To love and be loved is a blessing. Believe me, there's nothing more true. Happiness comes when you're sharing everything that happens to you. I find peace of mind when I'm near you. I see all the things love can do. To me, nothing's worth on this earth as to love and be loved by you I find peace of mind when I'm near you I see all the things love can do to me nothing's worth as much on this earth
thought that was a beautiful spring. The little girl enjoyed many visits with the tiny tree and all the little animals out in the meadow. Then one day it was time for the west wind to leave. Spring ended and the hot south wind brought summer to the meadow. During the heat of the day, the tiny tree was alone on the meadow. But after the hot sun had left for the day and the cool moon took its place in the sky, the little girl would sit on her front porch and look out over the meadow toward the tiny tree. That's where the little animals and their new families would be having their evening picnics. Everyone had plenty of food. Mm -hmm. Even Horace the hawk had all the berries he could eat. Mm -hmm. Listen to the tuba going oom pa pa But I'd rather hear the little renewet for clarinet because it's a prettier tune. Tweet, tweet, tweet. Listen to the flute is going tweet, tweet, tweet. But I'd rather hear the little minuet for clarinet because it's a prettier tune. It's the minuet for the clarinet. That will always be my melody And that's why any other tune wearies me so soon It's the minuet for clarinet for me Plink, plink, plink Listen to the fiddle going plink, plink, plink But I'd rather hear that little minuet for clarinet Because it's a prettier tune when you play for my love and me, I like a certain melody. One that's gay and seems to say how happy we will be. Wah, wah, wah. Listen to the trumpet going wah, wah, wah. But I'd rather hear the little minuet for clarinet because it's a prettier tune. Oh, no, gee, that was beautiful. starting to move them from the forest to the outside world. Gosh, Tiny Tree, I'm sure glad nobody's gonna take you away. Yeah, we'd sure miss you. And you'd really miss the meadow. Uh-oh, look, here comes some of the woodsmen from the forest. No, uh, there's a tree that won't grow up to be worth anything for anybody. Yeah, about all it'll ever be good for is maybe a Christmas tree. A Christmas tree? No siree, he'd never, never be a Christmas tree and leave the meadow. 
What happened to the tiny tree? Well, now, that year, just before Christmas, the little girl's presents and a very special Christmas tree with a glittering star on top were waiting in the village to be picked up by her parents. Then, without any warning, a blizzard roared down on the countryside, and the road leading to the village was buried under drifts of blowing snow. The little girl's father had waited all week for the storm to end. Finally, he could wait no longer. So early in the morning, on the day before Christmas, he set out on foot to try to reach the village and pick up the little girl's presents and the special Christmas tree with a star on top. This is the worst snowstorm since I can't remember when. I can't find anything to eat, and, and I'm starved. He's starved. I haven't eaten for days. Food, food. <laughs> oh, I gotta have food. Did someone say berries? I must be imagining things. This must be the last bush with berries on it in the whole world. I heard it again. I heard it again. It's true. The mole found berries. Maybe he'd give me some if I asked him. No, no. I couldn't ask him to share his berries. But what if I didn't ask him? Oh, but I can't. They're his. Now, well, wouldn't be right to take all his berries. But what if I just took one little one? Yeah, what would it hurt to take only one? I said I only wanted one berry. Oh, oh these are scrumptious. I love berries. Berries are the best in the world. And another. And another. And another. And another. And... Gone. Say, they're all gone. Why are you looking at me like that, Horace? Quiet. Berries don't talk. The hawk thinks the mole is a berry. Yeah, he, he's imagining things. Oh, oh, someone must go for help. I'll go. Oh, the mole, he, he, he needs your help. Quick, quick. The hawk thinks the mole is a berry, and he, he might eat him by mistake. I never saw such a big fat berry. Mm, if I can eat that one big berry. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, hurry. Uh, oh, please hurry, little girl. Stop, Mr. Hawk, stop. That's not a berry. That's your friend. Not a berry? My friend? Oh, my goodness. I must be goofy. What am I doing? It is my friend. I'm sorry, Mr. Mole. Oh, poor Mr. Mole. Poor Mr. Mole. Are you all right? Here. Let me help you up. Oh! Oh! Oh, dear me. Uh, help! Someone! Everyone, please! Uh, the little girl has fallen in the snow and can't get up! The little animals rushed over to where she lay in the freezing snow and very gently lifted her back into her wheelchair. Uh, listen, we we better take her back home to her mother, where it's nice and warm. Oh, dear, she sacrificed herself just for me. That night, Christmas Eve, the animals gathered at the little girl's window. Hey, look, everyone. Her mother's tucked her in bed. She must be dreaming of all the presents she'll find in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> 
and the Christmas tree with beautiful decorations. And with a bright star shining from the very top. Oh, my, 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 I forgot to tell you. Huh? Tell us what? Well, just before dark, her father came home and... He didn't have the little girl's presents or her Christmas tree with a star on top. He tried all day to reach the village, but he just couldn't get through the deep snow. Oh, my. The little girl won't have a single present to open. And not even a Christmas tree. With a shining star on top. And, and that's the way it is, Tiny Tree. The little girl won't have any presents, and not even a Christmas tree. With a star on top. Uh, well, maybe we could give her a present. But what do we have that she would want? Suddenly the tiny tree remembered what the two woodsmen had said about him. About all it'll ever be good for is maybe a Christmas tree. Of course. He could be the little girl's Christmas tree. So he whispered to his friends what he wanted to do for the little girl. What's that? You want to be the little girl's Christmas tree? But a tiny tree, you see, she can't see you from her window because you're way out here in the meadow. Yes, I was right, the tiny tree whispered, but his friends could move him from the meadow to a place near the little girl's window. Gee! I thought the tiny tree didn't want to be a Christmas tree. Yeah, but what made him change his mind? Love. He loved the little girl enough to leave the meadow and become a Christmas tree just to make her happy. Later that night, as all the tiny tree's friends watched, the little mole very carefully dug a trench around and under the tiny tree's roots. <laughs> This is no time of the year for a firefly to be out in the boat. <laughs> okay, tiny tree, you're all set to go. The little animals very gently lifted the tiny tree out of the ground. Then they wrapped the earth around his roots with blankets to keep him warm before they set him down in the sled. A caroling, a caroling, a caroling we go. That's it, tiny tree. You're all bedded down in your new homes. Well, now all we have to do is decorate you like a Christmas tree. Merry, 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 merry Christmas to you. May each day be very, very happy all the year through. Around the world you'll see the things the Christmas spirit can Bells will be ringing with everyone singing a Merry Christmas to you. Oh, look! The storm clouds are moving away. Oh, oh my goodness! Look! There's no bright star on top of the tiny tree. No star? You know, the field mouse was right. There was no star on top of the tiny tree. But then something wonderful happened. The morning star burst into a shaft of shimmering light that reached down to the tiny tree and then reappeared in all its sparkling beauty. It was the first light of Christmas Day. Christmas job.
cheer Thank the Lord above for all the love you have from those you hold dear Let the Christmas bells ring out proclaiming loud and clear Have a joyous Christmas, joyous Christmas and a happy new year Have a joyous Christmas, joyous Christmas worth as much on this earth as to love 